Jerusha Kanyua passed on the 9th of March 1974. She was a midwife, traditional doctor, and a prophetess. Jerusha's best remembered prophecy is the one she made on Sunday, the 3rd June 1951, while at PCE and Dagani Church. She prophesied that a huge mountain will spring in the village, that is Dagani. Big trees will sprout and grow very big and form a wide shed. The, then, birds from all over the world will come and land on these trees. People from all parts of the world will also come and cool themselves under the shade of these trees. There isn't that much in record about Jerusha's early life, but it is believed that she was born in the early 1870s in a village called Kara Village, Mwembe Division in the current Marasab County in the Rakanithi County of Kenya. Back then, the traditional way of life was the rule. This was just before the white man's arrival and disruption of the true African way of life. Hence, Jerusha was brought up in a traditional family setup around early 1890s. This was in her early 20s. She was married to Paul Jero, who was nicknamed Paolo. They later relocated from Mwembe to Chuka near Chuka General Hospital and settled there. However, their marriage wasn't as blessed for their several children all died in childhood from what was suspected to be some form of fever related illness. This resulted to her husband Paolo remarrying so as to have children. This second wife birthed Paolo a number of children. Then for unknown reasons he started to mistreat Jerusha. This made Jerusha relocate to Ndagani on the outskirts of Chuka town and settled there. She settled where the current Chuka University field is at. Since she had no children of her own, she adopted her younger sister's children, Alfred Mburia and Caroline, who are, to this day, regarded as her children. In 1921, the Church of Scotland Mission, SCM, a Presbyterian mission that had been operating in Kenya since 1891, made arrangements to post the first European missionary to evangelize the Chuka Mwembe area. On the 9th of October 1922, Dr. A.C. Iving arrived at Chogoria to build up the station and begin systematic medical work. Earlier, in 1915, the SEM had set up a mission station at Chuka with the recommendations of Rev. Dr. J.W. Arthur, but the station was under two Africans, Daudi Makumi and Samsoni Maingi, who were among the first Presbyterian African converts in Kikoyoland. The first Presbyterian convert from Chuka was Mr. Ayub Mogonjoki, who lived at Ndagani village. He was the one who persuaded Jerusha Kanyua, her husband Paul Njero, Justo Kanambiu and Betha Kangai, wife to Ayub, to accept the new Christian faith. Many people are cautious about this faith and they viewed it as a direct intrusion into their culture. Ayub had been converted to Christianity by Dr. Arthur. Thus, by the time Dr. Iving arrived in 1922, Christianity had begun to gain roots in what is today known as the Rakanivi County. It needs to be noted that Consolata Fathers, Catholics, had already come to Mwembe and established a mission station at Kariakomo, just a few kilometers east of Chogoria, in 1911. Dr. Iving settled at Chogoria in 1922 and started a SCM mission station there. He then started a mission hospital at Chogoria, which is today one of the biggest hospitals in Kenya. 
Now, by this time, Jerusha Kanyo was contemplating the miseries of life after having lost all her children and marriage. The word of God came to her through Dr. Iving and Ayub Mogo. She accepted Christianity, which to her was a great source of consolation at that time. In 1923, she was baptized by Dr. Iving and then offered a job at Chokoria Hospital as a casual worker. While working in the hospital, she began formal learning, but due to her advanced age, she did not make much progress. However, she acquired many skills in caring for the sick and due to her interest in medical issues, she acquired basic skills in midwifery. Thus, whenever she was at home in Dagani especially, during the weekends, she would assist women when they gave birth and preach to the people, urging them to accept the gospel of Christ. She is regarded as one of the first missionaries in Dagani village. Due to her effort, a church and a school was started at Dagani in 1937. In her homestead, she would offer advice like, a visitor is like water, just passing by and food for the stomach is not different from stool, one minute you're eating it, the other passing it out. With this, she intended to pass on the message of sharing and being kind to strangers. One would never go to Jerusalem's homestead, hungry and live hungry. She was always dressed in a hat, a long coat and a walking stick on her hand. Despite not being formally learned, Jerusha was very smart. She also had knowledge of the Bible and the numbers to specific hymn songs. Neighboring was Dagani Primary School, which had started earlier in 1937. The classrooms back then were built with cow dung and thatched with grass. Pupils from the school would normally get punished for various mistakes and punishments would include being sent home to collect cow dung for classroom repairs or help dig the pit latrines. Jerusha highly valued education and would often help the pupils in their various punishments. She would send them back to the classroom so that they may not miss much. Jerusha was also a farmer and would ferry her own down to the school alongside the punished students and would help in the digging of the latrines by removing the soil. She was a true Christian and would regularly hold players early in the morning and before the pupils would arrive, she'd sweep their classrooms and help in the maintenance of the rooms. Back then, shoes were a luxury that most pupils couldn't afford. Hence, pupils were prone to jiggers on their feet. Jerusha would help remove them. She also led prayers amongst the pupils as much as she could. She normally told them, a book is your shield and the pen is your spear. She also had a song that went like, Over the weekends, as she went to pray in other churches, Jerusha would inform the kids where she was headed, for instance Kierani, and they'd follow her. On the way, she would preach to the young ones and offer them guidance. In the church, Jerusha would lead prayers and was often found in the church praying. She was also a leader of the women's guild. Back then, in the 1950s, the church was also built with cow dung. Jerusha challenged the men in the church asking them, for how long shall we keep repairing the house of God with dung? This eventually led to the construction of the now Jerusha Kanyo Memorial Church, named in her honor in stone. Amongst the believers, she was very social and prayerful too. Her prayers were not lengthy, but were very effective for what she prayed about came to pass. Jerusha would pray for the sick and they would recover and even she would pray for the students and they pass their exams. In the Sunday school, she would preach to the kids and lead them in prayers. With children being the playful little people they are, Jerusha would often restrict them from leaving the church before her sermon was over. On Sunday, she would ask her household and people around her to stop whatever they may be doing, be it farming, taking care of livestock or whatever, and just head to church. In her time, she would clean and help maintain the church in as much as she could. Jerusha was also a part of the then church elders. More to being social, Jerusha was very caring and helpful. Having had a history of midwifery, she helped deliver children where she could. You see, the roads back then were in very poor condition. This made it very hard for pregnant women to move around. On top of helping deliver, Jerusha also offered young and new mothers advice, tips and tricks on nutrition in relation to both the newborn babies and the mothers themselves. She also shared health advice. In the event 
of a case that she couldn't deal with she would carry the patients to the hospital which at the time was in Chogoria and this was on foot being the selfless person she was Jerusha did help people through the administration which was through the chief and all the sub chief it so happened that at some time in the 50s a sickness befell the livestock this led to the initiation of a cattle dip that was constructed at the current day Kathongodon. The dip, though out of service, still stands to date. This dip was commenced in 1959 and its construction was led by Sebastiano Karan. Initially, Sebastiano worked on the project alongside Ngonyo from Imenti. However, Ngonyo left the project after some time. Sebastiano saw the project through with Mbaka Wasiadur. A committee was picked and sat down to pick a name. They decided to call it Jerusha Kanyo Cattle Deep in honor of Jerusha, who, on top of being a midwife, was also a traditional doctor, Daktari. She was so excited that through the administration, she gave her bull called by Tino for people to enjoy on the day the deep was being officially opened. It was slaughtered at Aniseta Siangai's place, and needless to say, the deep saved a lot of livestock lives. Jerusha was also often invited to the meetings held by the administration via the chief where she led people in prayers, shared knowledge with people on health, nutrition, farming and knowing God among others. In the meetings, Jerusha would also advocate to the parents for children to be taken to school and learn. In terms of prolonged lack of rain, she would pray for rain and it would rain. Jerusha would also act as a mediator in a conflict. Among the married couples, she would listen to both parties and solve the conflicts in between. Eventually, Jerusha grew old. Sicknesses of old age like cold, loss of eyesight and partial loss of hearing caught up to her. Jerusha died on the 9th of March in 1974, having changed a lot of lives for the better. In her burial, a lot of people came and mourned her loss. It also did so happen that a cassette containing a prayer session she held earlier was played. These tapes have since been lost as they were several. It was so moving that people asked if she'd risen from the dead despite her body lying in the coffin right there. This was the end of her life but not her kindness and prophecy that still came to pass and still is. Ndagani is still growing. Na ntuko ya maziko mawe, alhulele wapo izi ya ntunda kwela mari. Kwa uraia kana kari yo. Kana kari yo, kwa izi ya ntuko lele bala sosone anko boya. Ntuko ya ntuko lele bala sosone anko boya.